please a big round of applause for him as well. Now I request Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan, Mr. Justice Sumar Tahmudyal, to grant permission to start this conference. Sir, thank you. Thank you very much. I am Dr. Nas Fahim, your host of today, and I am representing IDM International University UA and Kingham Child University UK. And my co-host is. Unity Rights Forum. Let's start the program with Dr. Kwani Park. And for the institution of the Holy Quran, I would like to invite Kari Muhammad Umar from Rajpandi. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي جعل في السماء for the recitation of Holy Bible. And today's chosen passage from Holy Bible is Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. Mm -hmm. 
it's a great honor and privilege for me that I'm going to be a passage from the Holy Bible. Matrawat bin Sadhita Sikharam, Mukaddas Shuka Kandil, Uska Jarba, Uska Sora Se, Athara Ayatak. Then Yeshu Nazareth came to where he had Parvrish Pai. And after the Lord of the Lord, he went to the Sabbath day, he went to the Sabbath day, and he went to the Sabbath day. And the Shia Nabi said, you gave Yeshu to the Lord. And when Yeshu opened the Lord, he got the place where he was written. The Spirit of God is the Lord of God. That's why he gave me the message that I gave the people to the poor. That's why he gave me the message that I gave the people to the poor. और अंदम को बिनाई और कुचले हुओं को आजादी बख्शो और खुदाओं के साले मकबूल को मुश्तहर करो और वो तुम्हार लपेट कर और फादर को वापस देकर बैठ गया और जो बात खाने में थे उन सब की आंखें उस पर लगी हुई थी तब वो उनसे कहने लगा कि आज ये निविष्टा कानों में पूरा होकर तुम तक पहुंचे हैं आमिर पात्राम की पढ़े और सुने जाने से खुदा हम सब को बचा पक्षे आमिर For welcome address, you know I am I, Chairman I am I'm far in the future society, Mr. Samir Piana. سب سے پہلے تھینکیو بار مچ آپ سب لوگ یہاں پہ تشریف لائے اور میں شکریہ دا کرتا ہوں جناب عزت ماب چیف جیسیز آف پاکستان کہ وہ ہماری انویٹیشن پہ آج تشریف لائے آج کا جو پروگرام ہے میں بتانا چاہتا ہوں سپیشلی جیسیز اے آر کارلینیت صاحب جو پاکستان کے بہت دبان چیف جیسی گزرے ہیں پاکستان میں بہت بڑا کانٹیبیشن تھا ان کا کنسٹیوشن لکھنے میں اور ایون کہ جو آج سپورٹس کے والے سے کرکٹ وہ بھی جو ان کا بھی آئین تھا انہوں نے لکھا تو امپلیمنٹیشن منالی رائٹ فورم کی ٹیم نے اسپیشلی جو ہماری لیگل ٹیم ہے میس سمیرہ حسین ایڈکوڈ ہائی کورٹ کاشب نیمت صاحب اور ہماری باقی ٹیم جو ہے جس میں کومل پھٹی ان کا بہت بڑا رول تھا جب انہوں نے وزٹ کیا تو انہوں نے محسوس کیا کہ ہمیں فلیٹی میں یہ پروگرام کرنا چاہیے تو اسی طرح دب مین پروگرام جنہوں نے بہت زیادہ ایفرٹس کی میرے آفیس کے جو ہیں سروت آمر اور سپیشلی میں ریکویسٹ کروں گا سب لوگوں سے کہ ان کے لیے بھرپور کلیپنگ ہونی چاہیے ہم ان لوگوں کو بھی بھولنا چاہیے جن کی وجہ سے یہ پروگرام ہوتے ہیں تو میں ریکویسٹ کرتا ہوں کہ ان کے لئے کلیپنگ ہونی چاہیے مسٹر عزر مراد آج کا جو پروگرام میں اس میں میں بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ پاکستان میں جو ریف ملا ہے ہمیشہ ہمیں بدقسمتی یہ ہے کہ سنتالیس کے بعد کوئی ایسی بڑی لیجسٹیشن گورنمنٹ آف پاکستان کرنے میں کامیاب نہیں رہی اور اس پہ ایک واقعہ ہوا پشاور بم بلاسٹ تو اس میں ایک اپلیکیشن موگل جس کی وجہ سے ہمارے کے ذنمات جناب تصدر سین جلانی صاحب نے اس وقت سوموٹو نوٹس لیا پشاور میں وہ بم بلاسٹ ہوا ہمارے بشپ صاحب صاحب رازم فری پیٹر مجود ہیں بہت بڑا صدمہ اور دکھت دائمنے والا واقعہ تھا اس پہ چیف صاحب نے نوٹس لیا اور انیس جون دوزار چودہ کو ایک لین مارک ججمنٹ دی جس میں آئین پاکستان میں اقلیتوں کے حقوق کے حوالے سے تشریح کر دی گئی میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ تصدد سین جلانی صاحب کی وہ ججمنٹ اقلیتوں کے لیے ایک روشنی تھی جس میں یہ شروع ہوا ہمارے رائٹس 
और उस जजमेंट में ये कहा गया कि जो प्रिवलेज दिया गया वो ये था कि एक सेपरेट बेंच जो है वो सुप्रीम कोर्ट बनाती रहेगी जिसमें मिनॉरिटीज़ की जितनी भी शिकायत हैं वो सुनी जाएंगी चौदह से लेकर आज तक सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान को बेंच बनाती रहती है और हम पेश होते रहते हैं और जो हमारे मसले मसाइल हैं वो हल हो रहे हैं मैं बताना चाहता हूँ कि चंद एक चीज़ें जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की वजह से हुई उसमें सबसे बड़ी जो बात थी वो वन मैन कमीशन बनाया गया और वो कमीशन जो बनाया गया उसमें दबंग किस्म की पर्सनैलिटी का इंतब किया गया आज हमारी खुशकस्मती है कि वो हमारे साथ बैठे हुए हैं जनाब और मैं समझता हूँ उस वक्त ये बहुत बड़ा फैसला था क्योंकि पाँच साल से जजमेंट पे काम हो रहा था डिफरेंट चीफ जस्टिस भी आ रहे थे लेकिन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन का जो मरदा था वो कंप्लीट नहीं हो रहा था लेकिन वन मैन कमीशन के आते ही ये काफ़ी सारी चीज़ें होना शुरू हुई तो इम्प्लीमेंटेशन मिनाटी राइट्स फॉरम की एप्लीकेशन क्योंकि मैं जब से जजमेंट आई और जितनी भी हेयरिंग हुई हैं उस वक्त तसदस सैद जदानी साहब से लेके जो बेंच अभी जैसे तुम बताता आपने बनाया उस वक्त तक हम पेश होते रहे हैं लेकिन मैं शुक्रिया अदा करता हूँ वन मैन कमीशन का जिन की वजह से अलीफ मिल रहा है आठ छः दो हज़ार बीस में एक लैंडमार्क जजमेंट दी आ, मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूँगा कि अगर आपको ज़रा जैसी गुजार अहमद साहब का एक मिनट का क्लिप जो है वो चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ पाकिस्तान जस्टिस गुजार अहमद की कराची ट्रिलिटी चर्च आवर कहा अगलीत के हकूक सब नहीं होने देंगे अगलिया आपके हकूक का तहफ़ करेगी आपको उतना ही कानूनी तहफ़ हासिल है जितना किसी दूसरे को जो तहफ है उसका डिफेंस हम करेंगे और सुप्रीम कोर्ट उसको तहफ देंगे तो मैं रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहता हूँ आठ छ 2020 का एक डिसीजन था जो जस्टिस गुजार साहब ने दिया गाड़ी सेंट्री वर्कर इस वक्त मैं बताना चाहता हूँ कि इतनी बुरी हालत है उन लोगों की स्पेशली सिंध में डायरेक्शन के बावजूद भी 8000 हज़ार सैलरियाँ उनकी और चीफ जस्टिस साहब के ऑर्डर पे उनको ये सैलरी दस माह की दी गई और उसके बाद आज तक फिर वही हालात है आठ आठ नौ नौ माह की सैलरी नहीं दी जा रही तो मैं सर रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा और दूसरा जो है वर्मन मिशन की मैं थोड़ी सी बात यहाँ पे बताना चाहता हूँ उसके बाद हम आगे बढ़ेंगे उसके बाद स्पीकर आपके साथ डिस्कस करेंगे सोमोटो कोटा पम्प लास्ट किया गया मैंने एप्लीकेशन साफ साफ से तो मेरी एप्लीकेशन के लिए सोमोटो लिया गया और उसमें बेकायदा तौर पर हमने पैसे भी डिलीवर करवा दिए लेकिन गवर्नमेंट से पता नहीं क्यों नहीं चाहती कि वो रिलीफ दे तो हमें अपनी ही कंपनसेशन के लिए अदालत के पास जाना पड़ता है और सो मोटो करवाने पड़ते हैं तो अदालत कंपनसेशन के लिए भी हमें सो मोटो नोटिस करवाना पड़ा और अदालत की इन्वॉलमेंट के बाद सर वो कंपनसेशन हमें मिली और चर्च के लिए और उनके लिए पैसे रिलीज किए गए और उसी वक्त जैसे गुलजार साहब ने डायरेक्शन की और उसी पे सताईस करोड़ रुपये का जो अनडोलमेंट फंड है वो एक्सीलेंसी स्टैब्लिश कर दिया गया जो विक्टम थे जिसपे ये बम लास्ट नोटिस लिया गया लेकिन बदकिस्मती से सताईस करोड़ रुपये का अनडोलमेंट फंड कैम कर दिया गया है और उस पर कानून साजी भी कर दी गई है लेकिन अभी तक विक्टम्स को वो उनका जो एक पैसा भी नहीं मिल सका उसके बाद हमारे सी एम ए पे यानी कि नेशनल कल्चर अवार्ड जो मिनॉरिटीज़ का है दस साल से हम कह रहे हैं कि गवर्नमेंट स्कूल के नेशनल कल्चर अवार्ड फंड है वो करवाया जाए तो थैंक गॉड के सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने उस पर डायरेक्शन दी है और सूबों से वोट मांगी है तो मैं अब आता हूँ गवर्नमेंट कमीशन की तरफ बल्कि मैं बताना चाहता हूँ कि उस वक्त 
جب یہ ایک زوموٹو میں ایک ڈائریکشن دی کہ ہمیں مسیح لکھا پڑا جائے ہمیں سائلہ لکھا جائے تو سیکنڈ ہیئرنگ جب میں پھر ہوا تو اس وقت تابندیال صاحب چیف جیسی صاحب اس کو سن رہے تھے تو میں نے ریکویسٹ کیا کہ جو پرومس کیا پرائم منسٹر نے وہ تین لاکھ میں سیونٹی ٹو ہے تو اسی وقت انہوں نے ڈائریکشن کی اور پتر لاکھ جب بتایا تھا وہ دیا گیا ججمنٹس دی ہوئی لیکن بدقسمتی ہے کہ عمل درامد کرنا اس کے مشکلات ہو رہی ہیں اور جب میں ایک واقعہ زیادہ چاہوں گا ستر سین چلانی صاحب جب آپ کی جرسی تھے تو آپ کو پتہ ہے کہ واقعہ ہوا تھا جرسی صاحب نے ایڈوکیٹ جنرل سن سے پوچھا کہ اطلیتوں کی بادت کیا ہوں کہ بے عرمتی کے مطابق بتائیں تو انہوں نے جب پوچھا تو انہوں نے بتایا کہ اطلیتوں کی بادت کیا ہوں کہ یہ ہوتی تا جاتے پاکستان میں کوئی جرم نہیں ہے تو اس وقت پھر میں نے ریکویسٹ کیا کہ اس کو ضرور کرے گی تو ججمنٹ میں لکھا گیا کہ جنہوں نے مینارٹیز کو رائٹ دینے ہیں وہ خود بھی اویر نہیں ہیں تو میں ریکویسٹ یہ بھی کروں گا کہ اداروں کو اس پہ بھی کوئی ورک شاپ یا سیمینارس کرنا چاہیے کہ وہ آفیسر جنہوں نے رائٹ دینے وہ خود اویر نہیں ہیں تو اس وقت جو سپریم کورٹ کی طرف سے ہمیں ریلیف دیا گیا تر قسمادی مندر جو ہے وہ تمیل کرایا گیا جین مندر آپ کو پتا ہے کہ تیس سال سے نہیں تھا جین مندر بنایا گیا مان والمی کی مندر کے لیے ڈائریکشنز کی گئی نیشنل کلچر اوارڈ ہندو میرج بل جو تھا وہ ایکٹ میں کہا گیا مسیحی شادیوں کا جو نادرا میں تھا رجسٹریشن کا مسئلہ کیا گیا دیرانہ مسئلہ تھا یو سی ایچ میں قبضوں کا وہ سپریم کورٹ نے لفٹ کیا اور ون مین کمیشن کی میں ایک بہت ساری اچیومنٹس ہیں لیکن بڑی اچیومنٹس میں بتانا چاہتا ہوں کہ ون مین کمیشن نے پچیس ارب روپیہ جو وہ ریکور کیا ہے ویکیوم کورٹرس کا اور ستر کروڑ روپیہ جو ہے وہ پہلی دفعہ اس چیم ہوا کہ پچاس سی ایس ایس کی جو جاب تھی مینورٹیز کے لیے ایڈورٹائز کی گئی ہیں اور پنجاب میں کوئی پینتیس ہزار کے قریب جو جابس ہیں وہ کر کے تو وہ مینورٹیز کے لیے کیا گیا ہے اور اگر میں پڑھوں تو یہ سارا دل لگے گا اور سب سے بڑا جو معاملہ تھا مانا کی حفاظت گاہوں کے لیے پلیز یونٹ بنا دیے گئے ہیں تو ون مین کمیشن دن بہ دن کام آ رہا ہے اور یہ گفٹ ہے ہمیں سپریم کورٹ پاکستان کی طرف سے کہ یہ ساری چیزیں ہو رہی ہیں تو میں صرف آخر میں ایک ریکویسٹ ضرور کروں گا جن سی ایکچولی ہمارے جو چرچ پراپرٹیز کا بہت زیادہ پرابلمز ہے میں چاہتا ہوں کہ جس طرح ون مین کمیشن نے ہندو پراپرٹیز کو چیز ٹیک کیا ہے اسی طرح ہماری پراپرٹی کو بھی چیز ٹیک کر دیا جائے تاکہ جو ہمارے ساسے ہیں وہ فروغ دیے جائیں تاکہ نہ بھی کریں اور آخر میں آپ سب کا بہت بہت شکریہ میں تعلق تھوڑا سا کھوانا چاہتا ہوں ہم نے ابھی جیسے سے کر اس کا اکاؤنٹ بھی لکھا یہاں پہ فیڈرل جان صاحب بشپ آف بلوچستان اینڈ کراچی سے تشریف لائے ہیں بشپ فیضمن صاحب سیال کورٹ سے اور فیصل آباد سے بھی جی ہمارے بشپ صاحب آئے ملتان سے تو اسی طرح پشاور سے سب کا نبی پیٹر صاحب ہیں تو آلموسٹ کلاش سے ہماری نبی آئی ہے جی ملتان سے بشپ لیو صاحب ہیں اور 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 یو کے سے ڈاکٹر پیٹر ڈیوڈ سر اسپیشل آئے ہیں تو میں دوبارہ سے آئی ایم ایل ایف ٹیم کا شکر گزار ہوں کہ انہوں نے اتنی اسٹرگل کی اور آج ایک کامیاب پروگرام ہم دیکھنے میں اور اس کے بعد دوبارہ سے چیف جسٹس آف پاکستان آپ کا بہت شکریہ جب بھی ہم نے ریکویسٹ کی ہے آپ نے کبھی نہ آنے کی گیارہ اگست کے حوالے سے ہم نے ڈیلیگیشن کی ملاقات کی فوری ٹائم دیا جب بھی ہماری کوئی بھی شکایات ہوتی ہیں اور میں یہاں پہ اسپیشل شکریہ ادا کرنا چاہتا ہوں سینئر بادشاہ انور فضل صاحب کا وہ کیونکہ آؤٹ آؤٹ کنٹری تھے وہ اسپیشل جب ہم نے ان کو بھیجا تو وہ اسپیشل اس پروگرام کے لیے آئے ہیں بہت بہت شکریہ تھینک یو ویری مچ مسٹر سینگل پیار میں یہ سمجھتا ہوں کہ جتنی بھی کلیپنگ آپ نے سینگل صاحب کے لیے کی ہے وہ تھوڑی ہے اور شاید ہم وہ کام نہیں کر سکتے کئی دفعہ صبح صبح نے 
ਕਾਲ ਕਰੇ ਤੇ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਯਾਰ ਮੈਂ ਟ੍ਰੇਨ ਤੇ ਬੈਠਾ ਹਾਂ ਔਰ ਅੱਜ ਇਸ ਮੈਂ ਇਸਲਾਮ ਦਾ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਤੋਂ ਇਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਡੈਡੀਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੈ ਵੀ ਪ੍ਰੇ ਦੈਟ ਹੀ ਵਿਲ ਡੂ ਆਲ ਹਿਸ ਐਫਰਟਸ ਥਿਸ ਕਾਨਸਸ ਇਜ਼ ਅ ਯੂਨੀਕ ਇਵੈਂਟ ਇਨ ਦ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਆਫ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ when all stakeholders of the justice sector such as judges of the superior courts judicial officers representatives representative of the bar councils all minorities of a respectable clergy are brought together in consultative process the topic of today conference is privilege of minorities in the constitution of the islamic republic of pakistan so now i invite our first guest speaker right reverend bishop azad marshal the moderator bishop of church of pakistan and chairman national churches <coughs> of pakistan please come forward to grace the dais and show his inspiring thoughts Chief Justice of Pakistan, Mr. Justice Umar Khattab Mundial Saab, Asad Ibn Sam Jilani, former Chief Justice Saab, Mr. Justice Shul, Sadhan Saab, Bishops of the Church of Pakistan who have been introduced, respected clergy of other churches, diplomats, ambassadors, representatives, of religious minorities Mr. Samuel Bayara chairman of the implementation minority rights for Pakistan indeed he has an amazing energy to organize all of us at this occasion i i have my written notes but i will shorten this but i would like to say something in urdu before i do that it's a uh, very unique occasion ye ek bada khaas mauka hai ki main jo chief justice se aur mr justice satin sahab ki presence ko dekh raha hu uh it is really uh, i remember my college days i knew uh, chief justice kasim mustafa sahab very well and he was very kind to us like a family friend and we used to be able to go to um, जब चाहते उनके पास चले जाते तो मैं एक जमीर का कह देता हूं हमारा जिसके लिए हम गया जंग लड़ रहे थे तो एक दिन जब उनकी मौत हो गई कैद खाने में तो मैं ये सोच के कि मैं चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ पाकिस्तान को जानता हूं मैं उनके पास चला गया गाड़ियां खड़ी थी वो बेटा जाने के लिए जा रहे थे और मैंने किसी वो जो स्टाफ है कोका जी मैं उनको मिलने आया तो मेरा जी आप कौन है जी मैं उनको जानता हूं अगर नाम बता दीजिए अगर आप बता देंगे तो वो जरूर मुझे मिलने का मौका देंगे लो एम बी ओल उन्होंने कहा उनको अंदर बुलाओ मैं अंदर गया रास्ता आई वाज क्राइंग बिकॉज़ ऑफ माय फ्रेंड हु हैड लॉस्ट हिज लाइफ तो उन्होंने मुझे पहले सुनते रहे बड़े प्यार से फिर एक दम कुछ हुआ वो अटेंडेंट बड़े बैठ गए कहने लगे डू यू नो that you are talking to the chief justice of Pakistan. I think I'm sure. Every day I'm wrong. I think I'm saying, as I hear, you better say, whatever you are saying, it better be true. I think that you will be mad. Is he here? I am a professor. And then he asked for a statement. And he said, this is your statement about that gentleman. And he very kindly then orders to investigate further. So I remember that. how kind and loving chief justice law of course with a lot of authority that they carry uh ladies and gentlemen i will go back to my english notes uh it is an honor for me to pay homage to the late former chief justice of pakistan mr alvin robert cornelius and acknowledge his contributions to the judicial history of pakistan as a prominent jurist and legal philosopher justice cornelius work speaks for itself his courage 
his integrity and fairness continues to inspire generations of lawyers and judges in Pakistan and beyond. He was a staunch defender of the rule of law and advocate for judicial independence. Although he was a Christian by faith, Justice Cornelius had a deep understanding of both Hinduism and Islam in South Asia, which was reflected in his work. Foremost amongst his legal philosophy was a synthesis of Islamic ideas and Western thought. In numerous judgments, Justice Cornelius used Islamic principles, especially the concept of Adil no Insaf, and employed it in the local context. Jurists consider it the most significant intervention in the development of Pakistan, Pakistani judiciary. During his tenure as the Chief Justice, Justice Cornelius also tried to broaden, solidify, and enforce, enforce human fundamental rights in Pakistan. Even though Pakistan did not have parliamentary democracy throughout his tenure as the Chief Justice, yet he tried to ensure that the courts played their part in the protection and enforcement of fundamental rights in the country. Striving for justice is striving for the delight of God's heart. Justice is about visibility. Justice is close to God's heart. Justice is God's idea. This does not originate with us. The Old Testament prophet Micah's gentle words describe that justice is not just an ideology, but that which it requires along, alongside the pillars of mercy, love, and humility for society to taste shalom, peace, and peaceful order for the functioning of the world. A just society must also ensure that individuals are not discriminated against on the basis of their religion or belief, and that they are able to access same opportunities and protections as all other members of society. This includes access to education, employment, health care, and other basic services, as well as the right to participate fully in the political and social life of the community. When justice is not upheld and individuals are persecuted and discriminated against because of their religion or belief, it can lead to conflict, instability, and breakdown of social trust. I'm shortening it by going back to the word, the scriptures, we are here, I would like to say, this evening, this, uh, this afternoon, we are here by God's plan and design in response to the cry of God's people around the world. God's heart has always been moved by the plight of the vulnerable. Moses was raised up when the Israelites cried out to God and groaned under the heavy burden of slavery. Exodus, book of book in Torah, it is written that the crying and groaning comes to God's heart and God's heart is moved. When the crying goes to God's heart, then God moves. In Psalm 102, David cried out to God, pleading that God will look down from his sanctuary and bring close to and the human experience that compels even David to recognize that we are all vulnerable to injustice and mercilessness. As, as we have heard from our dear father James Shannon, that Jesus Christ too laid out his priorities, proclaimed justice as a key among them to bring healing and salvation to the suffering humanity. One of the cherished goal that we all have is to create, create a pluralistic Pakistani society where fundamental rights are respected. And that will, and, but it will continue to elude us 
unless we realize that we are living in a world of globalized interdependence, a world of interconnectivity, of cyberspace, of shrunken distances, of cross-border migration, and a world of rapidly changing cultural identities. We are all members of one race, of humans with common challenges, and we cannot confront these challenges without forging a common alliance. Article 20 of Pakistan's constitution does not merely allow a person a private right to profess their faith, but confers a right to practice their faith both privately and publicly. Moreover, it confers the additional right not only to profess and practice their own religion, but to have the right to propagate their religion to others. It is important to note that this propagation of religion has not been limited only to Muslims who have having the right to propagate their religion, but this right is equally conferred on non-Muslims to propagate their religion to their own community and to their own people. This should not be seen as a right to encourage conversion, but more importantly, should be seen as a right against forced conversion or imposing belief on others. Islam does not compel people of other faiths to convert. It has given them complete freedom to retain their own faith and not to be forced to become Muslims. This freedom is documented both in the Holy Quran and Sunnah. Though Islam has categorically emphasized the protection of religious minorities, I am compelled to say that we still have a long way to go in ensuring the implementation of these Islamic injunctions in letter and spirit. Crucial challenges include the religious conversion and forced marriages of under minority, underage minority girls, the misuse of blasphemy laws continues to haunt our communities. It is imperative that the child marriage restraint laws are fully implemented and legislation is carried out to protect minor girls from being forced to change their religion. We need to understand that such conversions and marriages are a cover for sexual exploitation of children and that this and disconnect with the state law and Sharia law is helping the perpetrators to elude justice. Abuse of the blasphemy law is also a serious cause of concern, not just for non-Muslims, but for Muslims too. We have repeatedly called for implementation or effective procedural and institutional safeguards at the investigative and judicial level to prevent the misuse of these laws, but this issue also remains unaddressed. Before concluding, I would like to draw your attention to another important issue that has a direct bearing on my community side. We are already perturbed by the results of 2017 census, which we believe grossly understates the Christian population. Now that the government is conducting Pakistan's first digital census, 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 we are again hearing complaints of undercounting, faulty questionnaire, and delay tactics by numerators. I hope that the Honorable Supreme Court of Pakistan, under your leadership, will take notice of these concerns and direct the government to ensure a thorough and transparent census process. And in conclusion, may we cherish the legacy left by Justice Anthony Robert Cornelius as an example and a staunch defender of the rule of law for promotion of other law itself in Pakistan. Pakistan, Zindabad.
Now I would like to invite Madam Swaha to receive Secretary of our High Court Bar Association to come here and share her views with us. Thank you. Good morning, rather good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. I am Secretary of our High Court Bar and in 150 years history of High Court, I am the first woman Secretary in the law of the Bar the introduction was not complete, so I prefer to introduce myself. And I am an advocate, Supreme Court of Pakistan. But there are very few women here who are advocates, Supreme Court of Pakistan. Uh, uh, I, have, uh, I would like to thank uh, the uh, management of this function, who have invited me and at last given me an opportunity to speak in presence of uh, CJP, Honorable CJP, and uh, Tasadu Dilani Saab, our former justice, Chief Justice. So, sir, may I, I, I am grateful that you have honored us and I want you to hear a few of our concerns. Here we have been talking about and I will speak to you both bilingual so that both of the communities can hear me. Here we have been talking about we have portrayed a very good picture of uh, our country that we are doing much for the minorities and they are very comfortable and they are enjoying everything. But I think that this is this is what I'm hearing from minorities themselves, which is really uh, astonishing for me that instead of uh, instead of uh, raising their voices, what is being done in this country with the minorities, we are we are out of fear. I am sure we are uh, saying that uh, we are enjoying a very peaceful life in Pakistan. And recently we have seen that seven teachers have been murdered just because they belong to religious minorities in Palachanar. Uh, and no, no action has been taken by the government. Although in tolerance and, and violence in the name of religion and faith uh, is, uh, is in the history of human, uh, human history, may fallacy about the peace history and that religion has been used as a tool. But uh, having said that, I think we need to uh, focus on few things. Just in the Sattu Jilani Sahib's enjoyment in 2014, in which seven directors were issued to the government, just the under National Commission for uh, Minority Rights, the National Council for Minority Rights. But having said that, I must, uh, I must take you back to the history in 1990. Mohtar Ma Benazir Bhutto was the first one who ordered uh, for establishment of a uh, national uh, commission for minority rights. Or uh, uh, gradually, its functions which they thought it remained redundant. Or its functions were uh, properly uh, uh, made in the format, nahi kiye gaye, rules were not made. But ultimately, the ministry, thi, ministry of Religious Affairs, the uh, minister, tha, he was heading that commission. And still, it is known as the Commission, the National Commission for Interfaith Harmony. Or what we exist at the meanwhile, Jalani Saab ki 2014 ki judgment a bhi. Maybe, this function mein aane se pehle, ek wo survey padi thi, jiske andar badi astonishing baat jo mere saamne aai hui hai, ke 2023 mein hum khade hai, aur aaj din tak sir aap ki is judgment ke upar, Sirf 22% implementation ho sakhi, which shows that how fair the state and the government is for minority rights. 22% implementation has been done. By the way, this is not something to clap for. Uh, it's been for okay. 2014 till 2023. And still there is not a 100% uh, implementation of the judgment of Honorable Supreme Court, which is binding upon all the state organs. So this is a sorry state of affairs, I, am, I must say, that the minority rights are not the state of the will to protect them and to, um, to uh, protect the rights of the minorities. Service with religious minorities are all coming. Not only Christians, we, we have to include Hindus, Ismailis, Kailash, or uh, uh, Parsis, everyone. So, uske baad sir, iske upar, ek aur, jo mein thode se facts aasa hai, aur I would like to share with you, ke aap ne saad directive issue kiye the, jis mein, uske baad, 28 follow-up hearing hui hai, so far, aur 79 supplementary orders 
पास किए ऑनरेबल सुप्रीम कोर्ट के बेंचेस ने फॉर कंप्लायंस ऑफ द दो सेवन डायरेक्टिव्स और जिसमें अभी तक ना तो कोई टास्क फोर्स बनी है ना नेशनल काउंसिल बनी है और ना कोई रिजर्व कोटे की जहाँ तक बात है वो कुछ हद तक इन्होंने इम्प्लीमेंट किया इन सर्वेंस माइनॉरिटीज के लिए लेकिन जहाँ पे माइनॉरिटीज मौजूद नहीं है वहाँ नॉन मुस्लिम्स को रिजर्व कोटा नहीं दिया गया और जबकि वो भी उसी कैटेगरी में आते थे फिर हमारा जो टॉपिक है वो बड़ा क्लियर है कि कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन जो है वो अपने राइट्स जरूर दे रहा है लेकिन अनफॉर्चुनेटली उन राइट्स के लिए आप कुछ नहीं करें अभी सैन्यल साहब यहाँ बता रहे थे कि इतने पैसे मिल रहे हैं और इतने करोड़ों रुपया मिला और हमें फंड्स मिल रहे हैं लेकिन वो फंड्स हमने क्या करने हैं अगर लोगों के हकूक को हम प्रोटेक्ट नहीं कर सकेंगे अगर स्टेट यहाँ माइनॉरिटी राइट्स का तहफुज नहीं कर सकेगी तो वी डोंट नीड एट सच मनी एंड वी डोंट नीड सच प्रॉपर्टीज विच कैन नॉट प्रोटेक्ट द पीपल हु आर लिविंग देयर एंड आर सर्वाइविंग और हमारे यहाँ पे फोर्स्ट कन्वर्जन का सबसे बड़ा मसला है और जिसमें हिंदूज एंड क्रिस्टन्स आर सफरिंग और सर आई वुड लाइक टू टेल यू बिकॉज यू हैव सेड दैट देर इज अगिस्ट्रेशन देर इज नो लेजिस्ट्रेशन और फोर्स कन्वर्जन देर आर ऑलमोस्ट फोर फाइव ड्राफ्ट ड्राफ्ट बिल्स विच आर प्रजेंटेड और टेबल राधर प्रजेंटेड इन दाउस सैनेट और नेशनल असेंबली बट दे वर नेवर बी थ्रू और उनके ऊपर जो हमारे मुलाजम है उसने उन उन बिल्स को एक्ट बनने नहीं दिया एंड दो बिल्स वर टर्न डाउन सो वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट फोर्स कन्वर्जन एंड फोर्स मैरिजेस ऑफ माइनॉरिटी इज द बिगेस्ट इशू सो फार ऑन विच वी आर रिडक्टिंग टू रेज आर वॉइस और इसका नतीजा ये है कि हमारी वो बच्चियाँ जो माइनॉरिटीज की हैं क्रिस्चन फैमिलीज की या हिंदूज की दे आर बींग फोर्सली मेड मुस्लिम्स एंड वेन they they are are being used for their their sexual uh, pleasures. They are, uh, thrown away out of their houses और नतीजा ये होता है कि the families don't want to keep them and the state has no rehab centers for those girls and ultimately they end up into prostitution. so these are the basic issues, these are the ground realities. फिर जब when Pakistan was uh, made, उस वक्त uh, there were ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ माइनॉरिटीज इन पाकिस्तान इंक्लूडिंग एवरी वन और अगर अब आप देखें तो देर आर हार्डली फोर टू फाइव परसेंट माइनॉरिटीज हुआ लिविंग इन पाकिस्तान आउट ऑफ फेयर आउट ऑफ फिर सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट बात जो है कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैज गिवन दैम राइट टू वर्शिप अकॉर्डिंग टू देर ओन रिलीजन और रिलीजियस बिलीव बट हाउ मैनी पीपल हेयर आर फ्री टू प्रोफेस देर रिलीजियस बिलीव और आई नो के जी साहब है सर आपके पास बहुत थोड़ा टाइम है मुझे इन्होंने बड़ी मुश्किल fighting a war uh, for the supremacy of the constitution and we are with you but i want you to hear this that at the helm of affairs you are sitting there and uh, you should uh, implement that uh, judgment of honorable the sadduk jalani sahab in letter and spirit aur jo aaj tak sirf 22% और हमें आवाज बुलंद करनी चाहिए इसमें कोई हर्ज नहीं है आप जितने लोग बैठे हैं यहाँ पर आई नो के डिफरेंट माइनॉरिटी माइनॉरिटीज के लोग हैं या डिफरेंट रिलीजन के लोग हैं कि पाकिस्तान जितना मुसलमानों का है उतना ही आपका भी है और इसलिए आपको बहुत ज़्यादा होने की जरूरत नहीं है अपनी आवाज़ें बुलंद करने के लिए अगर आपके साथ किसी किस्म की कोई नाइंसाफी हो रही है मैं यहाँ देख रही हूँ हमारे सिख बैठे हुए हैं तो वो आई नो के पीछे सिख फॉर मर्डर और नो बडी टू के रिएक्शन ऑन दैट एंड वी आर यानी साइलेंट ऑन दिस के समी एज फॉर मर्डर शियाज आर बी मर्डर क्रिश्चन एंड हिंदूज गर्ल्स आर बी फर्स्ट टू कन्वर्ट इन टू मुस्लिम जी बस मुझे एक मिनट दे दें आप सो मैं सिर्फ आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू से कि ये बातें हमें ओपनली कहने की जरूरत है हमें इस बात से डरने की जरूरत नहीं है कि अगर हम ये बात करेंगे तो कोई मॉल भी आके हमें मार देगा और हमसे राइट टू स्पीक या राइट टू एक्सप्रेस आर व्यूज छीन देगा मेरा ख्याल है 
Honorable Chief Justice of Pakistan, Mr. Umar Abadiyan, Chairman of Minority Rights Forum, Samuel Biara, Bishop John, our distinguished citizen, Sayyid Baba Ali, His Excellencies, Ambassador from Germany and Argentina, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great, indeed a great honor to be here to receive the award dedicated to Mr. Justice Dear Cardinalius and the rest of former Chief Justice of this country. While this award is an acknowledgement of the humble contribution made by me for the enforcement of religious freedom and minority rights currently in the Constitution. And as I accept the award, I dedicate this to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who in his last sermon to the people of Makkah said, and I quote, all mankind from Adam and Eve an Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. A non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also, a white has no superiority over black, except by good conduct." Unquote. I dedicate this award to the founder of this country, Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jirah, who in his first speech to the Constituent Assembly said, and I quote, you are free, you are free to go to your temples, you are free to go to your mosques, or any other place of worship in the state of Pakistan. You may belong to any religion or caste or creed that has nothing to do with the business of the state, unquote. And lastly, I dedicate this award to the makers of the constitution of this country, which in its very preamble provides a vision that Pakistan would be a state wherein the principles of democracy, freedom, equality, tolerance, and social justice, as enunciated by Islam, shall be fully observed wherein legitimate interests of minorities and black, black and depressed classes shall be fully protected. Article 20 grants freedom to every citizen to profess his or her religion and Article 25 guarantees equality before law and protection before law. Under Chief Justice, I recall while hearing the case which led to the judgment on minority rights and religious freedom, the court was conscious that religion in public affair has many a times led to societal conflicts. A country where the national literacy rate is 58%, where some are afflicted with religious illiteracy and where the absence of ishtihad leads to a myopic view of religious statements, it is vulnerable to extremism which generates pressure and an atmosphere of fear. Our judicial system at times is not free from such pressures, which cannot be attributed to politicians. One of the biggest threats to judicial freedom 
Honorable Chief Justice, is this religious orthodoxy. In such socio-economic milieu, the courts, and especially the Supreme Court, has an enormous duty to protect the constitutional rights of vulnerable groups, particularly minorities. The courts have to play a more proactive role for the enforcement of human rights, the rule of law, and religious freedom. The court, I must add, should act as a pedagogical institution to educate the people about the Constitution and its seminal values. It was this perception which persuaded me to take the only so auto that I, I took during my tenure as the Chief Justice of Pakistan of a bump blast in a church in Peshawar wherein 81 Christians died when they were offering prayers. During the proceeding, I also took notice of a newspaper report that Kalash tribe and his Smilies and in Chitral were being worse convert to a different sect within Islam or face death. The court was conscious of three things. Number one, that to disgorge misperception of religious rights about our faith and to give a counter and enlightened negative. Number two, that the court has to dilate on the import of fundamental rights of religious freedom and believe in the Constitution. And number three, the functioning of the state have to be reminded and sensitized about their duties in the enforcement of fundamental rights. In a detailed judgment, I issued eight directives which included changing the school curriculum, banning hate speeches, Creates creation of a special police to, to protect the places of worship of minorities and establishment of a national council on minority rights to ensure its implementation. I directed that a three-member bench of the Supreme Court should be created. It gives me immense pleasure to say that the said bench is still seized of the matter because the implementation of the judgment requires a continuous mandamus. However, the latest reports of the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan strikes a discordant note as it has identified specific instances of minorities facing persecution, marginalization, marginalization, forced conversions, and misuse of blasphemy laws. The inspirational commands embodied in Surah Maida and Surah Bakra have not been heeded to. Notwithstanding this note from the Human Rights Commission, the judgment has struck a responsive chord and has given a hope to vulnerable groups and minorities in Pakistan to work for the creation of a society where the constitution and its abiding values reign supreme. As long as this hope and struggle continues, the struggle for democracy shall not fail because as Dalit hands said, and I quote, Liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies, no constitution, no law, and no court can say it. Unquote. Thank you. Thank you very much. As an educationist, I would like to request Chief Justice that 2% quota 
for all in colleges and universities is implemented but in the professional colleges it is yet not been implemented so kindly have overlook it and now i request chief justice mr justice umar tabandyal to come forward to deliver his speech judge we are here to celebrate one of our former luminaries from the supreme court so i start with a verse of the holy quran which speaks about justice and also talks about judges this is from surah an-nisa verse 135 oh believers be a holder of justice and bearers of witness to truth for the sake of allah even though it may be either against yourselves or against your parents and kinsmen or the rich or the poor for allah is more concerned with their well-being than you are do not then follow your own desires lest you keep away from justice and now for us if you twist or turn away from the truth know that allah is well aware of all that you do justice cornelius was an embodiment of justice he was it's not been mentioned to you i'll just share this with you he stood first in the examinations administered by the alabad university for matriculation for intermediate and for bsc honors he was a graduate in mathematics physics and chemistry and at a young age of about 23 years he was selected by the premier service of india the the indian ics the indian civil service the finest men and women were selected there and he thereafter he went to selwyn college cambridge where again he excelled what i'm impressing upon you is that such a brilliant man who was in the civil service who would have reached the heights of prominence in the policy making circles in the administrative circles within 4 years said no to all that and in 1930 he joined the judiciary in the judiciary at a very young age of uh, i would say some sometime in the 30s he was selected uh, he was elevated to the high i'm sorry there's so much so he went he was elevated to the judiciary at the age of 41 in the high court lahore high court within 7 years later he got he distinguished himself and he was elevated to the federal Uh, court of pakistan i have spent a total of 19 years in the judiciary in the high court and the supreme court justice cornelius spent 17 years in the supreme court of pakistan he was one of the longest serving chief justices of pakistan from 1960 to 1968 and in times that were difficult because pakistan was an embryonic state it was growing it was uh, trying to grapple with all the 
difficulties of a young country and of course there were political issues. In 1955, Justice Cornelius, who was by then in this, it was called the Federal Court in the following year when the Constitution came, it became the Supreme Court in 1956. In the Federal Court, he was the lone voice which said that the dissolution of the Assembly, Constituent Assembly, by the Governor General was illegal. That judgment today is hailed as an outstanding rendition of justice for the reason that the majority decided that the Sindh High Court did not have the jurisdiction to decide the matter. And therefore, no, there was no judgment of the uh, Sindh High Court which could be assailed. It was an illegal judgment. The majority allowed technicality to avoid the truth. And when truth was avoided, justice was avoided. Today, one man's voice is celebrated in our circles. The rest of the men, although they include many distinguished jurists, the majority are not mentioned at all. This is the course of history and this is the message to any judge who wants to stay on the right course. The course written for us, dictated to us, directed to us by none less than the Almighty through the Holy Spirit. But that is not all about uh, Justice Cornelius. He was a simple man. Today I am informed that he stayed in one room for 40 years. He lived there simply. He had no assets when he retired. And from his pension, he paid the bills of this hotel. It was in this hotel where he lived. And I went and saw that room just now. But another beautiful thing about him, in 1968 he was to retire in May of 1968. But his colleague, Justice S. Devan, who had worked with him for years in the Supreme Court, was to retire uh, before then. So in order that Justice S.A. Neman may become Chief Justice also. Do you know what Justice Cornelius did? Two months prior to his retirement, he resigned from office. He sacrificed. This was a man who had the capability to give and to share. These are the qualities which I submit respectfully. Judges must have if they have to do justice. I feel inspired by that gentleman because he wrote brilliant judgments also. I just mentioned you the 1955 judgment on in the Tamizuddin case. Then there was this famous Doso case in 1958, which was the which is the one that um, legitimized martial law for the first time in Pakistan. But an offshoot before the court in that case was whether uh, fundamental rights had, that had been violated prior to the martial law and the cases were pending in the courts, whether those petitions would abate or continue to be enforced. The general tendency was that everything is closed. This, the constitution is abrogated and a new legal order has started. But Justice Onions wouldn't believe that. 
He said, but this happened before the abrogation took place. These rights for fundamental rights accrued and were claimed before the uh, abrogation took place. So even after the abrogation, those fundamental rights will be enforced. And this is the way the gentleman conducted himself. He did, he did something similar in uh, Abu Lala Madhudi's case in 1964. Two provinces in the country at that time, East Pakistan and West Pakistan, decided to abolish the Jamaat Islam. It was an executive order, opinion of a government servant or an executive officer, whoever it was, declared that this political party should be abolished. There was one view projected by the government that the fundamental rights did not protect the uh, uh, party and that the opinion given was reasonable, it was fair, it could be seen, it could be determined and therefore no intervention, interference should take place. Justice Tony has held that this case does not concern the propriety of the order only. This case concerns the fundamental right of freedom of association. And if the political right to associate has been defeated in this party's case, then that's a breach of the fundamental right. And no executive officer, no government authority can sit in judgment on the fundamental right. It is the court which does that. And the result was they lifted the ban. The Supreme Court was together on that. He was the Chief Justice at the time. They lifted the ban. I could say much more about him, but I want to move ahead. I want to move to the subject which may be of interest to you. And this is the subject of minority rights in Pakistan. Our constitution, as Ms. Sabah just told us, assures freedom to profess religion, to manage religious institutions, subject to public order and morality. Our constitution in Article 21 safeguards uh, particular religions against taxation for purposes of any particular religion. So for no particular reason can other religions be taxed. Article 22 safeguards education institutions in respect of religion, etc. No religious instruction or ceremony in educational institution other than one's own religion is to be given to the students. No citizen can be denied admission to educational institutions which receives aid from public revenues on the ground of race, religion, caste, place or birth. Basically, our constitution says everyone is free to profess their religion. All citizens are have equal rights. There is no discrimination amongst them. And yet, for years our minorities have felt discriminated, have felt sidelined, marginalized. It is in these circumstances in the year 2014, some nine years ago, the Supreme Court, under the charge of Chief Justice Prasadha Bazar Jilani, who sits with us right here, took up this challenge and came up with directions to protect the rights of the minorities. There were several directions that were issued. Directions about curriculum, directions to ensure that there is no hate speech on social media against minority religions, directions that a National Council for Minority Rights be established, a task force be established, 
and a special police force be established to protect religious places of worship. A job quota for minorities at 5% be ensured. And similarly, an admission quota in educational institutions be ensured. For many years, this, these directives were carried out under the charge of Mr. Shwebsan, who sits right here. That was a one-man commission. He worked strenuously, selflessly, and achieved many objectives. I may agree with Sabah, there's a lot more to be done. But pursuant to their judgment, there was movement and a great deal was done. Today, the minorities see their judgment as an umbrella which protects their rights. Today, the Supreme Court acts as a facilitator vis-a-vis -vis the government authorities who have been cooperative. We must not overlook the fact, ladies and gentlemen, we have been through at least three decades of extremism. We have lost 80,000 citizens in this country to extremism. And by the grace of God, the situation is improving and a lot of the complaints regarding violence which the minorities had and even, even Muslims had because of sectarian uh, rivalries, they have diminished. I think that is that resilience which the Pakistani nation has shown through these turbulent times is a great credit to the people of Pakistan. And with great respect, also the state of Pakistan. Things are on the mend. A task force which is, uh, was not in existence has come into being recently on 16th of November 2022 under the chairmanship of the additional secretary, Ministry of Religious Affairs and Interfaith Harmony. The members of the task force include almost all important executive functionaries in the country. Which means that the issues relating to minorities protection and minorities rights would now be handled by persons who are directly related and who have uh, authority over the persons that will carry out the instructions. I have hope and expectation that this task force will do well. Our association with Mr. Sattu continues because he is a court appointee. The court has a special implementation bench. Nine years have passed but there is an implementation bench for this judgment. And today I have been mentioned a few issues. I said file an application. You see courts cannot pass executive orders. We cannot act on verbal statements or complaints. These matters come to us through petitions or applications. Each notice is issued to the concerned parties and the respondents come forward and an order is passed after hearing the parties. But these are public interest proceedings. There is nothing adversarial about that. And I may assure you, uh, for quite some time I was the chairman of the implementation bench. Now it is headed by someone else. And uh, uh, we always found cooperation from the government of Pakistan, as well as the provincial governments. So, nothing to despair about. Be positive and inshallah we'll progress further in this direction. You see, the protection of minority rights, the protection of rights of different 
sects within the fold of Islam. All this has to do with awareness and knowledge. You will be pleased to know that the Islamic faith does not appreciate sectarianism. There are several verses of the Quran that talk about it. And it is said that leave this, these differences to God. Don't fight amongst yourselves. What you have to do is Amar bin Maruf wa Nahiyan and Munkar. Amar bin Maruf is do good deeds. Nahiyan al Munkar is Others who do bad deeds, just inform them and tell them, don't do this. You don't have to become violent. You don't have to become aggressive. But you should stop that. You should advise that. In relation to uh, religion, the Surah Bakara in 1956 says, there is no compulsion about it. There is no compulsion in faith. This is your own will, your own wish. In uh, uh, Surah Maida, which is number 5, Surah 5, I 32, it is said, whoever kills one person unjustly, is as though he has killed all of mankind. And whoever saves one life, it is as though he has saved all mankind. Mankind, whatever the form, whatever the color, whatever the creed, whatever the faith, is indistinguishable. There is no discrimination. That is how the Almighty considers human beings. In Surah Al Anam 6, Surah 6, 108, the Almighty says, Do not denigrate the deities of other faiths. Lest their ignorance, in their ignorance, they disrespect Allah. Thus, Allah has made pleasing to every community their deeds. Let them do their deeds, their religious deeds. In Surah Hajj 22, Ayat 40, he says, Due to the intervention of Allah, to protect the places of worship of other faiths, the people who were confronting and fighting with each other did not destroy those places of worship. God intervened to prevent the destruction of places of worship. This is how important they are. This is how important the right of worship is. And so on. There's more, but I will not spend more time on that. What uh, I would now turn to is the judiciary. Is the institution to which justice Cornelius belongs or belonged. The heritage that he left behind, the lessons that we can learn from him. We have a duty, ladies and gentlemen, under the Constitution and pursuant to our oath to preserve, to protect, and to defend the Constitution. This is our bounden duty. The highest law in the country. And this duty we perform with utmost commitment and sincerity. The force of judgments that we give must be in accordance with the Constitution and the law. And when that is the case, our judgments have a moral authority. Just like the words of the Bible have my moral authority, just like the words of the Holy Quran have moral authority. 
Moral authority comes from something which is good, something which is pure. Our judgments have the force of moral authority when they are given in accordance with the constitution and the law of Pakistan. When, when do judgments have moral authority? Ladies and gentlemen, they have moral authority when they are passed on the merits of the case. Otherwise, otherwise in Tamizuddin's case, 1955, dissolution of the Constituent Assembly, the majority said, said High Court didn't have jurisdiction. So they couldn't go to the merits of the case. Justice Cordelia said no. The Constituent Assembly is an organ higher than the general wishes and discretion to give assent. It was said that the Sindh High Court doesn't have jurisdiction because the law under which they are doing this is does not did not have the assent of the Governor General. And by doing so, by declaring that that assent was not necessary, the learned single judge, the dissenting judge, Mr. Justice Cornelius, held that the dissolution of the Constituent Assembly was illegal and unconstitutional. That judgment survives today as an example because it was on the merits of the case. Whenever we resort to technicality, our <coughs> focus has shifted elsewhere. I'm not talking about Pakistan. I'm talking about all over the world. All over the world, one comes up with objections that such and such judgment is weak because it does not deal with the real issue. <clears throat> and when it comes to constitutional enforcement, we must not break our eyes. If it says 90 days for holding elections, it is our duty to save it. It is not our choice. It is not our choice. It is our duty to say that. Instead of finding a reason why we should avoid to say that. This is what has happened. You call it controversy. I'm sorry. I'm not worthy of controversy. I'm a very humble person. You say you support us. Please don't say that. I'm just one of the members of the Supreme Court of Pakistan. If you stand up for the constitution and the law, then you must support the Supreme Court of Pakistan. And not any individual. We have no existence individually. Our existence is as a unit, as a constitutional organ. And that is how we function. But the important thing is, that the Supreme Court, when it speaks on merit, its judgment has moral authority. That becomes even more important when those judgments are not appealed or no review is filed. Then that means no one has any objection to the judgment. If a review is filed, then it will be heard. Because no judgment is binding unless it becomes final. But if a judgment is not challenged, then it becomes final. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens now. And uh, I am optimistic that the people of Pakistan, the leaders of Pakistan, the institutions of Pakistan are all committed to the constitution. Do you know that in this context, the leaders of Pakistan, the political leadership of Pakistan agreed to start negotiations, which have not ended yet. This is what we were informed. We have nothing to do with that. 
but at least they are conscious that they have a duty to comply the constitution. And we are there to support that effort. Otherwise, our judgment is there. It has a force of its own. It will not be implemented today, but it will last to the test of time and shall be implemented. Now, I have not much more to say except to thank our hosts, Mr. Samuel Piare, Mr. Samuel Piare, the Honorable Bishop, the uh, pastor and the bishops. And I don't remember exactly what your offices are, but uh, it's a matter of privilege to be here. I haven't told you that one of the most respected citizens of Pakistan, for whom thousands of people have love and affection, is sitting here amongst us. He is devoted to education because he feels, and rightly so, that education is the source of progress for the individual and for his community and for society as a whole because he comes back and shares his education. Who has given away money, time, effort, love, support, everything to students for, him, for giving them good education. He is the founder of one of the best institutions, academic institutions in the country, which started as a business school but today offers engineering, law, tomorrow it will be medicine, I'm sure. I'm not sure if it is, there's a medical school yet or no. Not yet. And I'm talking about Sayyid Bhagavad Ali. Let's give it. It's uh, delightful to meet wonderful people. Uh, and uh, as Sayyid Bhagavad Ali had a role in my life also. So thank you. <clears throat> my other a great benefactor sits here, Justice Tasudu Zanjilani, totally committed to the law, so gentle and so refined, such a good example of judicial character, conduct, bearing and delivery. Because one of the great advantages in life or blessings of life is when you have heroes to look up to. So I am very lucky in that respect. Within my profession, within my vocation of judges and my profession of the law, amongst lawyers. I have come across such outstanding people. I cannot stop thanking the Almighty for those associations. This is a memorable occasion for me. Thank you very much all of you. My best wishes and uh, the implementation bench is always there. File an application and let's see what happens. Now we are moving towards the last part of our conference where some awards and certificates will be distributed. I request you, Justice Ahab to please come forward. Sir. I with Chairman Mr. Samuel Piara. And I also request Dr. Peter from UK for the award distribution ceremony to join the team.
No I request Muhammad Shreb to try to solve the problems as much as possible. <laughs> there is a one member of the IMLF team who did a splendid job right to information and won the prizes. No, I request Mr. Bhutakja who came from the scene and did a number of artists to receive his certificate. Please give him a big round of Last but not the least, I request Ishad Vijanjam, who is currently working as a director of operation at his hotel. <laughs> to maintain the former Chief Justice of Pakistan, Mr. Justice Samuel Robert Cornelius suits where he always stayed. All his families are still alive due to their efforts. <laughs> so there is one uh, more thing left that uh, Mr. Samuel, Dr. Peter Bishop, and Pastor Samuel Khadr, please come forward and give shield to Chief Justice, which will remind that he will be the part of that conference. Thank you very much for joining us. You know, please, let's proceed towards the refreshments. Thank you very much.